Hi, my name is Aaron. Uh, this is a video of me making a wooden urn for my brother Andrew who died last year. Uh, it's going to be a continuous grain cherry using uh, traditional woodworking and some fancy laser engraving techniques. I'm making the urn out of locally grown uh, and cut cherry wood. I bought it the, uh, the week that he passed away. I was up at my lo local lumber supplier and I found a nice piece of cherry. Um, they really just it jumped right out of the stack at me and that's the one I picked um, here in these clips you can see some of the processing joining planing getting the wood ready to make this continuous grain box what you see there the little black box is actually a temporary urn that the funeral homes will give you uh, that's what I was using to size all the different portions of the box. I think it's about uh, 9 inches wide by about 4 inches tall. And uh, what I do is I'm putting that uh, with the ashes actually inside of the wood box that I'm making. So what I'm doing in this portion is I'm making a, uh, there's a jig that I found on YouTube uh, that lets you make the cuts so that you can have that continuous grain look. Um, I had some issues getting it flat on the miter saw. Uh, as you'll see here, uh, it kind of wobbled a little bit, but I kept playing around with it and uh, finally got it fixed and kind of dialed in a little bit better to where it made the cuts uh, as perfectly as I could. And then here's me cutting some test pieces out of some uh, scrap cedar I had. I didn't want to cut into the nice stuff, uh, especially this being my first time making the box. I also had to improvise a nice hold down there because my hand was getting way too close to the blade. Uh, Here's me putting some uh, test pieces together. Here I am getting ready for the dry fit before the glue up. Uh, I think it's always a good idea just to check and make sure all the miters are good and going to fit together. Um, so I've already sanded it, putting some tape down, going to uh, use the tape to line everything up, do the dry fit, and then glue it uh, for the final glue up. And it looks like I did the uh, test fit off camera. Um, just have me actually doing the uh, final glue up here and coming up we're going to see my favorite tool and there it is right there if you don't have a pin nailer I think you need to get one because they work great for stuff like this um, we had some time constraints where I didn't want to wait for the glue to dry completely, so putting those pins in there really helped move things along. Now we're getting down to where I'm routing the putting a chamfer on the base and the top pieces for the box. Again, always trying to run a test piece to make sure I like it first. I've screwed up a lot of projects not doing that. And then just making quick work of the chamfers on there. Probably like most woodworkers, my miters aren't uh, always perfect, so taking a little time to sand them, uh, blend everything together, and you can start to see some of that continuous grain in the, as it wraps around the outside of the box. And there it is, right there, some of the uh, how the grain just runs. And I think it turned out really, really well. I was really proud of that. Uh, here I am getting ready for drawing some center lines for the laser engraving that's going to go on here. 
lines or rectangles. It's really just as simple as measuring from both edges and marking a little uh, X in the center of each side, uh, engraving on the uh, both sides, the front, and then the lid of the box. So I was making this uh, box and doing the lasering at uh, my local makerspace. Here you see me getting some of the files ready uh, using an Epilog 60 watt. The theme that I'm going with is kind of cowboy related because that was a big thing for my younger brother. He uh, always wore cowboy boots and uh, really just uh, liked the cowboy image. And uh, so I found a nice, some nice vector files, cowboy playing a guitar and some boots with a hat on them that I thought would look nice. Uh, here's me, I'm getting everything set up in the machine. Um, if you've never used a laser, don't be intimidated by it. If you can find a local makerspace or somebody in your community who has one, let you try it out. Um, they look kind of crazy in advance, but once you get the hang of it, um, they're really actually very easy to use, very user friendly. Uh, for the top, I found a nice uh, Tree of Life artwork that I liked. And then uh, you'll see some shots of the finis finished piece here in just a second. The uh, thing you didn't see off screen is I attached the bottom with some screws so it can be removed and that black temporary iron can be put inside the top. I attached uh, through the middle or through the inside with uh, just pocket screws to hold it in place. Uh, if you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.